Freedom prospers when religion is vibrant and the rule of law under God is acknowledged. An informed patriot is what we want. Welcome to Focal Point, the home of muscular Christianity on conservative talk radio. Muscular Christianity, where we relentlessly explore the intersection of truth and politics. The trouble with our liberal friends is not that they're ignorant. It's just that they know so much that isn't so. Now, here's your host, Brian Fisher. Hi, and welcome to this Tuesday edition of Focal Point AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name, your congenial, convivial, and amiable, as always, host. Great to have you in the conversation. The Taliban roaming loose in Qatar, or Qatar. I just like to say Qatar. I guess you pronounce it Qatar. But the Taliban, those five, the dream team, the starting lineup for the Taliban, they are running loose in Qatar. There's no monitoring. There's no control. There's no restraint. Those guys have the run of the land, the run of the country. No reason to think they're not going to be back on the battlefield anytime soon. Meanwhile, they've got Bo Bergdahl holed up in some reintegration program in Germany. And I'll tell you what I think, ladies and gentlemen, we'll get to this as the program develops, but I think it's going to be a long time before we see Bo Bergdahl. This thing, the deeper you get into it, the messier this thing look looks and the worse it looks, for the Obama administration. This thing is completely blown up in President Obama's face. We'll talk about that later in the hour as we get to, to all of that. But I think that the Obama administration now is going to have to keep Bo Bergdahl under wraps. They've got to keep, keep this guy out of sight. Uh, he's a deserter. They're talking now about the possibility of a death sentence for him for going AWOL, which is a capital crime. If you do it on the battlefield, desertion is a capital crime. According to the UCMJ, nobody's calling this guy a hero anymore. The Taliban's running loose. He's locked up in this reintegration camp. Uh, the Obama administration can't afford to let this guy breathe American air right now because people are so outraged at Obama uh, and outraged at Bo Bergdahl. Uh, what the body count knows up to 14 of soldiers who lost their lives trying to retrieve him. So there's just simply no patience right now with this whole deal. I'll explain what I think President Obama's motive was for the whole thing, but the whole thing has completely blown up in his face. Now, um, wanna, before we jump into all of that, want to look at a little bit of Scripture before we do that. Uh, in the reading, um, in the late parts of the book of Exodus, chapter 33 today, as the Israelis get ready to break camp and move toward uh, the promised land, the Lord instructs Moses at the very beginning of this chapter, it's time for you to depart and go up from here, leave Mount Sinai, and go to the border of the land where I'm sending you. And God says, I will send an angel before you. But then he says, I will not go up amongst you, lest I consume you on the way, for you are a stiff-necked people. So God set up his tent of meeting completely outside the camp. You know, because what God was saying, look, I am so disgusted with you guys for this golden calf deal, the way you abandoned me. In less than 40 days, you get impatient, you follow, you plead with Aaron, he cooperates with you, he makes this golden calf, you lapse into idolatry. And uh, remember, God was ready to wipe Israel out and start all over. And Moses was the one that had to talk him out of it. God says, look, I'm going to wipe this people out. And I am going to start all over with you. I mean, there's a remarkable offer that was made to Moses. And he pleaded with God, no, save this people for the sake of your great name. Because people are going to get the wrong impression. They're going to think you brought them out into the desert. You couldn't save them. That's why they died. You need to step in. You need to rescue. You need to be patient. You need to be merciful. You need to extend them grace for the sake of your own great name. And Moses, his intercession for his nation was successful. He spared his nation from the wrath and the destruction of God. And I think we need to remember that, that we have the same capacity to intercede before our God. You know, things are urgent right now in our nation, aren't they, ladies and gentlemen? Aren't things urgent? I mean, things, we're in desperate shape. There is no health in us, as Isaiah said. And so we're, we're facing desperate times. Uh, we're facing a situation where a lot of us believe that the wrath of God has already begun to fall on this land. It could fall in full measure. We all recognize that. People that don't understand that simply are clueless. So you and I understand that. We know that uh, we are very close to an irreversible act of judgment on God's part. 
That's where Israel was. And Moses interceded for the, his people, for his nation, with God, and God spared them. God relented concerning the disaster that he was going to bring on them. So let's never forget that intercession worked in the days of Moses for his nation, and just as they worked in the days of Moses, so they can work in our day as well. But God says, look, I'm pretty frosted with the people. You know, sometimes how you get frosted, let's say, with your kids when they're just being sort of, uh, I don't know, they're just they're just being uh, punks. And, uh, you know, you, you get to the point where you say, I just can't be around these kids. i got to separate myself because I'm afraid I'm going to go off and do or say something that I'm going to regret. So you just have to, you just have to pull yourself out uh, of that environment. Or you got to send them to their room uh, before you go off and say and do something that you're going to regret. Well, God, you know where you got that capacity to be so frosted with the rebellion and misbehavior of people that you're responsible for? You got that from God. You feel that way because God has that same capacity. You're made in the image of God. And you also have the capacity to do something about it. You have the capacity because you're made in the image of God. You can step aside. You can step out of the room. You can step out of that circle. You can step out of that environment if you need to do it in order to protect the people uh, that are involved in that situation from some kind of display of your wrath and anger. And so God says, look, I'm going to set my tent of meeting completely outside the camp. So Moses, that was called the tent of meeting because that's where Moses went to meet with God, met with him above the mercy seat. That's where God met with him, which is a beautiful picture. God says, I will meet with you, but the place I will meet with you is the mercy seat the place that stands for my mercy and my forgiveness, not my wrath, not my judgment, but my grace and my forgiveness. That is where I will meet with you. And when Moses would go outside the camp to the tent of meeting, everybody would see him do it. The cloud would descend upon the tent of meeting, and there God would speak with Moses. God would speak with Moses face to face as a man speaks with a man. Moses pleads with God in the tent of meeting, please show me your glory. God says, I'll do it. You can't see my full glory. It would incinerate you. Be like looking at dead at the center of a, the explosion of a, uh, of a nuclear bomb looking directly at the sun. It will destroy you if you do it. So I'm going to hide you in the cleft of the rock, and I will cause my glory to pass before you. Now, we have access to the unseen temple of God in the heavens. We're told that we can go in there anytime we want. We can talk face-to-face with God. God will talk face-to-face with us, particularly through his word, and he will manifest his glory to us if we seek him for it. Well, let's go to prayer for ourselves and for our land. Sovereign Lord, I pray this day in Jesus' name that you will send your angel before me, my family, the listening audience of Focal Point and AFR Talk, President Obama and all of our elected officials, every man, woman, and child in the United States, that you will send your angel before us and that you will drive out every enemy of flesh and spirit from our lives. I ask you to show us any way in which we have stiffened our necks against you. May we be distressed and mourn over our stubbornness, strip ourselves of our pride, and humble ourselves before you. I pray that we will often enter into your unseen tabernacle in the heavens to meet with you and inquire of you. I ask you to speak to us face to face as a man speaks with his friend. I pray that you will know us by name and that we will find favor with you. Please show us your glory and cause all your goodness to pass in front of us. I ask you to proclaim your name in our presence and to have mercy and compassion on us. Amen. We're going to transform our culture. It's possible as each believer first lives a holy life before God. Turning from our sin each moment and remembering the Lord first in all that we do. This defines the life of a true guardian of culture. When our faith in Him is strong, we can't